Christmas lightning for the hotel for winter maintenance. This presentation will be presented by Mallory Crow at the University of Akron in assistance with Dr. William Schneider. If you're attending the conference via phone, please, please mute your phone and do not place it on hold. We do not want to hear the hold music. And if you have any questions, you can uh, type your questions in the chat pod on the left-hand side of your screen, and we will answer those at the end of the presentation. The presentation will be available on the research website. You can download it or just view it on the site uh, probably in about three weeks or so. And with that, I'll go ahead and let Mallory get started. Uh, good morning. I'm Mallory Crow. Um, I'm going to be presenting today. Uh, I, if you have any questions, we'll be doing that at the end. And I'm sorry if I go quickly through anything, but I want to make sure we have time to answer everything. And the final report will be up, so more in-depth detail about this project will be available. Uh, first off, we just want to thank um, ODOT research team and our uh, technical panel for all their support and help on this project. And let's get started. So obviously snow and ice management is one of the single largest expenditures in the maintenance budget for ODOT. So anytime that there's an opportunity to minimize the cost while maximizing efficiency um, through new pieces of equipment or whatever, uh, ODOT's interested in evaluating that to determine if it's worth their investment. Um, Ashtabula County and ODOT had also already had a tow plow and they did a, their own pilot study. Um, they really liked it, so they wanted to gain more knowledge on this new technology to see if it should go into other areas throughout the state. So for this project, originally it was for Portage County um, only, but since Mahoning County had also purchased a tow plow and Ashtabula already had one, we, um, we wanted to expand into other areas to gather more data uh, to see what it's like in different areas of the state. So from here, you can see the garage locations, um, and then the three counties are in green that the study took place in. Also, Mahoning County did go all the way down State Route 11 into Columbiana County. It, they kind of helped them out, too, throughout the, the winter season. All right, hold on. It should, it should recycle. <laughs> okay. It's back. It's okay. Back. It glitches. Sorry. All right. So that's where the project took place. So uh, we compared it to a standard truck. Most of ODOT standard trucks are either single or axle tandem dump trucks with either 11 or 12 foot plows. There are some foot 14 foot plows, and some may also have an additional wing plow, which adds an extra five and a half feet. Um, so for this particular study, it was. Um, the truck on Portage that was opposite of the tow plow was a tandem axle truck with a 14-foot plow and a wing plow. So we really were putting the tow plow up against the, um, the kind of biggest, baddest uh, standard truck you can kind of get out onto the road. So again, here's the comparison. Uh, so you can see in the picture one of the wing plows expanded. They only really put the wing plow out into the middle of the lane when they're um, doing gang plowing like this due to the fact that it's hard uh, for the public to see in safety hazard. So there were two sides to ISA, um, Interstate 76 in Portage County. One was treated by one of the trucks, whether that be the standard truck or the tow plow, and the other side was treated by the opposite. They switched throughout the season, which we'll get to when we talk about the Bluetooth nodes. Um, so it's important to understand what the tow plow system is. This figure can be found um, on Viking uh, Survey's website, and it kind of just details some of the specs of the tow plow. Uh, it's, it's, um, you need at least a tandem axle truck with 350 horsepower engine to pull it, or it's recommended, um, or you might have some issues um, getting the tow plow up and throughout the various terrain that you have. Um, the tow plow units that ODOT purchased were equipped with a hopper and a brine tank, but you can do your own kind of configuration, whether you just want brine tanks or whether you want two hoppers. Um, it clears a 25-foot path in 
um, when you're joining it with the tan tandem axle dump truck, as you can see from the figure. And it operates safely from 30 to 40 miles per hour. In some places, I think they can drive it even faster. But that's what we, we saw throughout this, this uh, study. So when we're collecting data for this project, we looked at three various types. We looked at the weather, um, which consisted of looking at NOAA um, hourly snowfall data. And then from there, we can determine weather severity for each storm event that the trucks were out in. Uh, the next one would be the vehicle speed. So that would be the public's vehicle speeds, the level of service of the highway. So we used the Bluetooth node system along um, 76 and in Portage County to compare the side that the tow plow was treating to the side that the standard truck was treating and to determine the level of service provided by each one of those trucks in various uh, weather events. And then we looked at, obviously, the snow plow trucks themselves. The tow plow we equipped with a video system that recorded um, different angles of the tow plow so we can see how it's being used throughout storm events. And the standard truck was equipped with a GPS AVL unit, and we also verified that information with the 661 forms that the operators fill out during storm events. That was to determine how the, each truck was utilized. So when we start with the weather data, the, we use the NOAA data. Um, it was the one website that provided us with um, the precision we wanted, which was hourly snowfall data. We didn't want it to be uh, daily or weekly because that wouldn't really help us um, with this project. So we found remote sensing um, centers, stations that they have um, closest to where the tow plows were being deployed, and those are the, uh, the snowfall data that we used. Um, we would review the cumulative, the total cumulative snowfall during that event and the peak hourly during that event to determine, to categorize it into one of the five groups, which would be no snowfall. So that would be if the trucks just went out um, and they were expecting snow and nothing happened. Trace snowfall, which is um, less than like a tenth of an inch. And then you get into the light, the moderate, the heavy. Um, the details of those categories can be found in the report. Um, here's a sample of how we categorized what a weather event was. Uh, we basically looked, allowed for there to be one hour of no snowfall, and we added um, an additional hour at the end to allow the trucks to still clean up from that snow event. So from this figure on the left, you can see um, the hours from this date from 7 a.m. going into the next day at 8. And you can see that there's one event earlier um, of, on the top of the table, that's just a two-hour event. And then at the bottom, you see a larger event. So those would be considered two separate events and be categorized differently. Um, you can see from the bar chart on the right, this is our distribution of what kind of events we saw throughout the study. So a high um, number of light events, and then moderate. And then you, know, you get the trace events, and the heavy and the no snow are, are fairly low, just that you know, whenever uh, the, the snow, snow, like I said, when they go out and they don't necessarily need to, doing pre-treating or something, making sure it doesn't ice over. Uh, next, we're going to look at the vehicle delay data. Um, so we wanted to obviously compare the delay that's caused by the tow plow and the standard truck and the level of service on those two segments. We used Bluetooth technology. Um, they were placed along 76 in Portage County. Uh, you can see here is a list of what the nodes consist of. Um, and they, they don't pick up, obviously, every vehicle. They're just picking up vehicles that have Bluetooth-enabled devices on them. But it allows us to see the trends of the, the roadways at various times throughout the event. And the Bluetooth nodes are placed out in the field. Um, they were placed out the year before also, so we had good baseline data to compare. So we could see what the speeds were during any time of any type type of weather. And they are maintained weekly. The batteries need changed out. So here's a little figure of uh, where they were placed and what we're considering the western side and what the eastern side of the Interstate 76 are. So um, between each no or each time a vehicle passes one of these nodes with a Bluetooth enabled device, it time stamps it. And then from there, we can calculate um, how long. We, we have a fixed distance between the nodes, and we have the time stamps. We can calculate what the speed of that vehicle is. And we can do that throughout the whole um, interstate along in Portage County. 
And State Route 44 is kind of the, the split for the eastern side and the western side. Um, so when we looked at the delay analysis, uh, we were comparing the expected time travel, so we used that baseline speed, to what the actual time travel was during the snow event. Um, we looked at three different categories for the storm event for this one, and we, we didn't, because you can't tell what the future snow is going to be, uh, we used the, just the previous four hours, and that's how we categorized the storm, which is different than the overall utilization of the tow plow storm categories. Um, so here is a list. We have light, moderate, heavy, and we looked at three different scenarios, which can be seen in the figure. So the first one is just looking at each individual node and the time it takes to travel between them. Uh, the second one is looking at the truck's exit, looking at the time as soon as the truck's exit. And the last one is looking at the standard truck delay once the tow plow was gone. So truck, or once one of them was gone, which I believe truck B. Okay, so the delay after each one was gone. I'm sorry. So the expected time travel based on the uh, baseline data, the western side was fine using the speed limit of 65 miles an hour as the expected time traveled, where the eastern side we did notice that it was slightly higher at 66 miles per hour. So that's what we used to determine that expected value and the delay. So when the tow plow is treating two lanes and the standard truck is treating one lane in light snow, um, there's more of these graphs and more of these uh, delay relationships provided. I just wanted to give you guys some. We do see for the first, um, the blue line, I get the colors a little bit. The solid blue line is the tow plow in light snow zero to four minutes after treating. So after it's treating two lanes, you can see that the cumulative delay um, line is a little bit slightly higher than when the standard truck, which is the dotted red line. Um, so you could see like you expect to be about 10% of the cumulative delay is around, you know, a minute, between a, a 1.2 minutes um, for tow plow. That's kind of how you're reading these graphs. The equations at the top are just giving you the fit equations. Um, so we do see that the tow plow, when it's treating two lanes, because there's no passing lane, does cause a delay um, more so than the standard truck. This is when their tow plow is treating two lanes in the standard truck, but this is a heavy snow event. So you still see the delay, but the standard truck also has somewhat of a delay. And that's just the zero to four. Once you get into the 15 to 19 minutes later after treating, they're pretty similar. So it doesn't take much. That the immediate delay is higher for the tow plow, but once it gets a little bit later, 15 to 20 minutes later, the delays start to um, become very similar. And then this is after the trucks exit the highway in heavy snow. You can see that the delays are, are all, all very similar, whether it's zero to four minutes after treating or 15 to 20 minutes after treating. So there is um, higher delay with the tow plow during most storm events, but once they leave the highway during heavy storm events, it's the same whether it's the tow plow blocking two lanes or not. Uh, there's more configurations as far as tow plow treating one lane and shoulder, um, and again, there's the moderate snowfall um, delay uh, charts also available in the report. So the standard truck data, we said we used the GPS AVL, and you can see a picture of one of the modems and a screenshot of the 661 reports generated from uh, this system, and we use this to determine the utilization of the, stand, the standard truck during each one of these storm events. So whether they had their plow down or plow up or whether they were salting or not. Um, and that's all going to play a factor once we get into the cost analysis and the utilization of the trucks during different storm events. The tow plow, um, we use the video data. Um, the top left picture are some pictures of the cameras. So we have a driver side camera, uh, the rear camera looking back, which usually got snow covered, but was more for the operators anyway when they wanted to turn around the trucks. The passenger side camera, which kind of allowed us to see if the tow plow was deployed or not, or and whether the blade was up or down, and then the front camera, which allowed us to see the front blade and what the traffic and everything looked like um, in front. 
Uh, the below it is a picture of what the angles actually look like on the video, the DVR that gets re that's recording these cameras and what we looked at during our analysis. And you can see that there's time and dates and uh, lat and longitude so we can see where the tow plow is actually at. We also put uh, lasers on the three tow plows, which are guidance lasers. They're meant for wing plows to let you know where the um, end of the plow is so that before you get there so you don't cause um, so you don't hit anything with it. Uh, we, they're meant to be stationary above the passenger side window and at a set angle to whatever it is. But since the tow plow um, can be deployed at any angle, uh, Ashtabula decided to try it on Mahoney's counties when they were doing some different things like upgrading the lights. They decided to try to make a rack that moved along with the wheel well, wells. And it actually, so it actually moves as the tow plow moves out. So you can actually see exactly where the end of the tow plow is at any angle. And they liked it so much that they ended up making one for their tow plow as well. And at the bottom picture is one of the DVRs, which just is um, recording the cameras and has a hard drive that we would switch out um, every so often to download the data. So when we looked at the video data, we looked at front plow usage, tow plow deployment, and then from there, whether it was plowing or whether it was only salting. Through discussions with ODOT, we decided that if the tow plow is deployed and the blade is not down, it is salting. Um, everyone was pretty comfortable with that assumption. We also looked at the tow plow's position, so what angle was or what lane the tow plow was in. And then obviously, if the tow plow was not deployed at all. Uh, here's a sample of one of the spreadsheets from the video documentation. Um, the detail we went through was basically, I mean, we probably watched about 2,000 hours worth of video for the three trucks throughout the season. And any time uh, one of the things listed below, which is tow plow deployment, tow plow treatment, uh, front plow deployment, they get on a new route or they change lanes. Any time one of those was changed, a new data line was created. So we basically document what the tow plow is doing at all times throughout the whole season. Uh, when we get into the discussions of the results of the utilization of the tow plow, um, I want to make sure everyone understands what we mean by tow plow deployment. So here are some definition pictures to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about when we use these terms. So tow plow deployed um, is the first one above. So obviously the tow plow is swung out at some kind of an angle and it's being used to, with some kind of treatment, whether it's salting or plowing and salting. Uh, you can also see a picture of what it looks like in the video data. Below that is when it's not deployed. So it's directly behind the standard truck, not deployed at all, um, which you can also see in the video data. The tow plow could be used to be salting at this point, but there's um, we would consider that not being utilized because it's not, it doesn't need to be there for them to salt that road, that lane. Um, here's some of the position of the tow plow definition. So the top uh, left is the shoulder, so it could be at any, some form it's pushing back the shoulder. Um, it's pretty obvious to tell in the videos when they're worried about the main line and when they're doing cleanup and worrying about the shoulders. Uh, you can, there's a couple different ways. It could be in the right lane, as you can see from the top right and the bottom left. It could be over a little bit into the median to make sure everything gets pushed over, or it could be more so in the right lane. But we would consider both of those right lane deployments. And then anytime it's on a ramp, it's, it's a ramp deployment. So the overall tow plow deployment throughout the season, and this is for all of the um, counties combined, they're, it's broken down by counties in the report, if you would like to see that. Um, so we're looking at, we did it by time and by mileage. So you're looking at 53% uh, uh, mileage that was deployed to 47% not deployed, and the time being similar at 56 deployed and 44 not deployed. Um, for during the times that it was deployed, so during that 56, 54% of the time, this is what the treatment of the tow plow was doing. So 91% of the time it was plowing and, and um, probably salting, but we have no way to verify that, but it was being used to plow. Um, 
and 9% of the time it was just being used to solve, which is um, getting, you know, it's really, that's the way you would want to use it mostly to, to plow and salt, not just to salt. Tow plow position, um, so you see for plowing is uh, the first part of the bar chart, so when it was plowing, this is the distribution of what lane, so you can see um, right lane is, uh, by mileage is 69% and by time is 66% of the time when it was plowing, uh, which means it's not being used as just a cleanup vehicle, which was good. When it was salting, uh, surprisingly it was um, salting mostly in the shoulder, but it was only salting 9% of the time. So um, that's overall not too bad. Give you guys a minute to look through that. I don't want to read off all the numbers. So when we get into the cost, uh, we wanted to look at what the annualized cost of the tow plow versus standard truck was. We used the Monte Carlo simulation in MATLAB, uh, which basically you set um, an average and a standard deviation uh, for the variables used in your equation, and it will randomly do a random number generator as many times as you set to give you an overall average of, and with a distribution of what the results should be. Uh, we used utilization rates for each of the trucks by storm classification. So how much during each one of these storm events, on average, was the, were these trucks being utilized? Um, and then we also determined a tow plow to standard truck equivalency. Uh, it just, the tow plow can do what two trucks can do. However, it doesn't always, it can't always be deployed and doesn't always need to be deployed. Therefore, we know that it's not an exact two to one ratio. So we wanted to determine based on our observations through this study on these owed out routes, what that truck equivalency was. And then obviously we were gonna compare them. Uh, so this is a flow chart of the variables that we used when we wanted to look at annualized costs. So we wanted to look at annualized capital costs for each one of the pieces of equipment. Um, the annualized factor, we had one set, set number for variable for those, which was eight years for the standard truck and eight years for the truck pulling the tow plow. However, through discussions with ODOT, um, they believe that we can get two truck lives out of, for one tow plow. So the, the annualized capital, or the annualized factor for the tow plow was set for 16 years expectancy for life. And then um, we looked at the, what the, it costs per year. Uh, for the maintenance cost, so we looked at parts and labor. Um, I think that, or we, I know that we, we just kind of combined those into what they expected for overall maintenance costs, but that would include parts and labor. Um, when we looked at the operational cost, we did the fuel cost per year and the labor cost per year. We say, uh, we, when we look at uh, the fuel cost, we want to obviously look at what the price of the fuel is, uh, and then we wanted to look at what the fuel economy was for each one of the vehicles um, when they are treating and when they're not treating. So uh, we used real field data to determine that based on the 661 reports, uh, what each one of them did, uh, or what the average and what the standard deviation was for each one of those variables. Same thing with the speed of the trucks. Uh, we looked at if there was a difference between the speed of the tow plow versus standard truck, and when we looked at all the data, we got an average to be, um, I think, 31 miles per hour for both, so we just set it as one. We didn't need to split it into two different speeds. And then hours per event, events per year, and then we looked at a utilization rate per storm type. For the labor cost, uh, just the labor rate, hours per event, and events per hour, be, or events per year. Basically, if they get called in, whether they're in a standard truck or a tow plow, they're there for that, their shift. So it doesn't make a diff. Whether they clear their route faster, they're still there. So that was just set as one thing. We didn't need to go into too much uh, detail about for the labor rate. Here's a list of the variables again with what, va what averages and standard deviations we use along with the source of these variables. Um, the utilization rates, <coughs> excuse me, will be presented in um, another slide here. 
But if the source says ODOT, it was um, through discussions with ODOT, through their financial reports that they provided us with information such as the cost of the other tow plows that they purchased, um, along with their fuel price. Um, so all of these things were, um, deter were determined using ODOT um, data. And then for the fuel economy, again, we used uh, the 661 forms. Um, for the speed of the trucks, we used the video data and the GPS AVL system from the trucks that we had um, collecting data. Uh, events came from NOAA, uh, labor rates ODOT. So here's a list of those. Again, they're presented in the report if you would like to go into more detail on them. So when we talk about the utilization rate, we wanted to determine how much they were used during each winter event. Uh, when you're looking at the utilization rate for the tow plow, it's basically just the time the tow plow is deployed, the amount of time it's deployed during an event, divided by the total time it was out during an event, multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. For the standard truck, again, we use the GPS AVL verifying with 661 information, so the times that they were saying that they were treating, which includes plowing or salting, over the total time they were on the route during the event. And then this was done for each type of weather classification, except no snow. We just looked at trace through heavy. Um, so we looked at it for each snow event, and we looked at it for overall, because we use the overall when we look at the truck efficiency. So overall, the tow plow is utilized 54% of the time, and the standard trucks utilize 65% of the time. Um, now that's just the average and would make sense, because the tow plow can get their uh, routes done more quickly than a standard truck. When you look at trace events, they're very similar because um, you maybe don't need the tow plow during a trace event. And then as you get to light event, moderate, heavy, you can see the tow plow gets done more quickly than the standard truck. It takes the standard truck um, more treating loops um, to, to get the uh, route clear versus the tow plow. So. Yes, and we looked at the utilization rates during the hours of the events, not during the cleanup time after, um, because that can just that can vary um, just dramatically on what the operator is wanting to do as far as cleanup. So we just really looked at during that storm event, which included that extra hour, um, to determine what the utilization rates were. When we get into the truck equivalency. Again, like I said, it's not the one to two ratio because it's not always um, able to be deployed or needed or necessarily needed to be deployed. So um, when we look at them, we wanted to set our equivalency. We want we want to see what the e the uh, the capacity. Sorry, let me just start over here. So we have the capacity of the tow plow times um, the utilization of the tow plow times the efficiency of the tow plow, and we want that to we want to figure out when they're equal. So we set it equal to um, the capacity of the standard truck, the utilization rate of the standard truck, the efficiency of the standard truck, times the theta. And the theta will be your equivalent a number of standard trucks needed to um, be equal to the tow plow. Uh, so when we're looking at this equation, however, the efficiencies of the tow plow and the standard truck um, are not something that you can easily gather or collect or determine. Um, so using multiple trucks, using multiple tow plows, using multiple standard trucks, we can um, use the assumption that those two are considered equal. And those two will drop from the equation. So from here you can see, when, once we drop the efficiencies from the equations, we know that the capacity of the tow plows two lanes, we already just saw the table determining the overall utilization rate of the tow plow. Setting that equal to the capacity of the standard truck being one lane, the overall percentage, util, overall utilization of the standard truck, and then from there we can calculate what theta is. We used MATLAB uh, to determine theta, so we ran it in a Monte Carlo simulation again. I think we did it a million times and it almost crashed one of the computers, <laughs> but we did let it run and it came out with um, an overall theta being 1.706. So from that, you can say that it takes, for, from, the observe, from the observed data from this study, 
it will it would take one or the tow plow is doing the work of 1.7 standard trucks. And this is the distribution. You can see it's a very tight one. I'm, um, so it's we we would consider that a good good distribution for this. When we look at the annualized cost, um, again we're looking at the annualized yearly cost would equal the annualized capital cost, maintenance costs, and operation costs. Um, here's a sample of the distribution. There's um, each there's one for the tow plow, there's one for one standard truck, and there's one for the equivalency standard truck presented in the, in the uh, report. So they're all ran 500,000 times. The average cost um, presented here at 83,629 per year is for the tow plow. Here are the results for the other um, relationships that we looked at with standard deviations. You can see so for one standard truck, and remember that our standard truck had the additional wing and 14-foot plow, was uh, 62,212. Um, the equivalent truck, however, came out to be 106,180. Um, so from there, you can say that the tow plow compared to the equivalent trucks has a savings of 20, about $22,551 per year, based on the data we observed in this study. If there were to be no savings, if they, we wanted them to be equal, that's saying that the tow plow needs to do at least 1.4 with the standard, with 1.4 standard trucks. Um, again, more data is presented in Chapter 6 of the final report. And then we get into implementation. So when we, when you're looking at the whether or not a tow plow is ideal for your area, it is very important to look at what your current routes are and what your current cycle times are for each one of your for your, each of your routes. Um, we didn't want to do necessarily a yes no. We wanted to make sure that there's a lot of factors that come that play a role in determining whether a tow plow is going to work out in your area or not. Um, and from what we observed, one of the biggest things would be your lane configuration. So how are your routes set up? Are you even able to deploy a tow plow on your routes? If you can't deploy it, it's probably not a good idea to invest in one. However, if you have a lot of multi-lane roads, um, that would be your kind of your first indication of if you think it works for you. Um, we did see from Chapter 5 data for the traffic impact that there is a delay associated with the tow plow, if you're in parts of, if you have lanes that um, have multiple, six or greater, there might be a passing lane to get through the tow plow. However, when we were looking at the four lane divided and portage, there were delays because vehicles couldn't pass it. Um, this also could be, a, you might like, you might be okay with that. Are we good? Are we lost in here? <laughs> Did it get lost? I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything. They said it would come back. If it didn't, I should just be able to make you the host again. Like I did when Kelly was here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to, I'm not sure how you, I can make you, let me see if I can just make, I'm not seeing you as to, okay, let me see if, because what I can do is this, you're off of here for okay. some reason. But they they can see it. Um, I'm actually almost done with the slides too. So 
Let's see if this is still... It just went off, Kelly, and she's not on here, so it lost connection. And I know it's supposed to just recycle back. It's not. No. And she's not on here at all. So can I just take her? Should we troubleshoot it? Yeah. No. I'll just look at through this and just sign back on. See if it will allow us to do it. Yeah, exactly. Just right in there. We're going to do the working on it right now. How long I hope it can last through the rest of the presentation. Well, I don't have much more slides, so. Okay, so you're okay. It's good. Okay, okay we're good. So. Is this the other screen I'm behind it? And yeah. I, I don't have to see mine anymore. And we'll make her the presenter. Actually, I am. I think we're figuring it out. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let you go ahead. Sorry about that. So when we're looking at the ideal environments for tow pile versus maybe a less ideal environment for a tow pile, again, to reiterate, we talked about lane configuration. Um, do you have routes where you can actually use a tow pile where it can actually be deployed um, and used to its fullest? Uh, next, you want to see, is, are these routes routes that you are okay with slowing down traffic, 
um, and delaying it during um, while the tow plow is um, deployed. Uh, some county managers throughout this project felt that they like the, that fact that traffic has to slow down. Um, it allows people not to travel on untreated roads and cause accidents. Um, so those are just different things that you want to keep in mind if you're um, looking at implementing a tow plow within your fleet. Uh, the next one is going to be your weather. So um, are you going to be able to use it to its fullest? Are you going to be able to use the plowing? Um, if you're just going to use it to treat, um, is that the best uh, a piece of equipment out there for you? So areas with higher amounts of snowfall um, would be more ideal for a tow plow versus ones with a light snowfall. Uh, through literature reviews and discussions, uh, there are things like terrain are also important to consider, uh, especially when you're looking at which truck you want to purchase to tow the tow plow. Um, there have been different, um, uh, there's been different surveys for other states that have used it, saying that it's hard to get up some hill, whole, hills, so rolling terrains um, are, and flat terrains are more ideal versus maybe the mountainous, mountainous terrains. That doesn't mean you can't use it, it just means you might need a bigger truck or you need to just be aware of that when you're looking at a tow plow. Also, turnarounds are another thing to think about, which also came up through the lit review. Uh, you want to make sure, do you have a lot of places that the tow plow can actually turn around, um, or is it more urban and harder for it to maneuver and switch directions? Uh, the table on the right kind of just gives a little bit of um, when you're looking at your snowfall categories and what kind of lanes you have where you know tow plow is less ideal in two lane areas no matter what your snowfall is because you're not going to be able to really deploy it first maybe two lane with a big shoulder you can probably deploy it some to help gear off shoulders and then once you get into the four lanes or more you get into the more uh, better areas that you're going to want um, that you know you might see a better more of a benefit from having a tow plow within your fleet uh, this was another table that we, uh, just a theoretical table we, we um, created, which is just looking at potential savings um, based on the data we observed in our study. For the first top table, we looked at if you got 20 to 25 events per season, 26 to 50 events per season, 51 to 75 percent percent uh, events per season, 76 to 100 uh, events per season, and then you can see that the rows consist of what kind of snowfall those events are. So the first one being primary trace and light, uh, the next one primary light and moderate, and then moderate heavy. Uh, for this one, we used all the same data that we used to determine the cost for the tow plow. However, we just changed uh, the distribution of snowfall amounts. So those are the only thing that was manipulated out of those equations. So there was multiple random distributions for to fall within each one of these categories. And then from there, determining a range of what the cost savings could be for the standard, for the tow plow versus the equivalent 1.7 standard trucks. So you can see that there is still a savings associated even when you do have small and light events or small amount um, events and when they're lighter. Um, however, that doesn't always necessarily mean that it's the best piece of equipment. You want to make sure that uh, you have routes where you could use it. Also, you normally wouldn't design your fleet for the, um, the you know, the, uh, the most severe event. You, you would design it for what you normally want to see. So you just really have to make sure that you look at your routes and if it's realistic, even though there is a cost savings associated with it um, in the lighter events. And when you look at the table below, um, the same thing holds true. This is actually just looking at capital costs. So this is not looking, this is if the tow plow is sitting in your parking lot and if the standard truck is sitting in your parking lot. Um, and you can see when you look at one tow plow to 1.7, uh, one equivalency, you get that cost savings um, just based on capital cost alone of $4,100. However, you cannot purchase 0.71 of a truck. So when we looked at two to three, um, the tow plow is actually more expensive capital cost, um, looking at capital cost 
by um, $2,200. Um, and you, you, if you remember from previously that 1.4 saying that there's no savings, that was using snowfall data. That was trucks going out and um, being ran. This is just capital cost. So um, when we looked at the, the next greatest whole number using the 1 and 1.7, Going up to the next closest whole number using those ratios, you get a 7 to 12 ratio. And that one, again, you see that there is the savings with the tow plow of, um, in just capital cost of 30,600. 30, All right, so um, thank you for your guys' time, and we'll open up for questions. Okay, we have one question okay. on the webinar right now, okay. and that is from Greg Selstead. He's asking about slide 36. Implementation, you presented ideas for terrain. Do you have specifics in regards to grades associated with rolling versus mountainous? Any additional context to the use of terrain? Um, those, uh, that information came from literature reviews. Um, New Hampshire is the one that reported to us that they were having issues on some of their hillier roads. I do not have great information as far as um, precise what grade it would work on and what grade it wouldn't. Um, I would recommend if you're considering it and you're worried about it to call New Hampshire, talk to people there. Also, um, I know that um, the counties in ODOT are more than happy to talk to you about what routes and what trains they currently have and what trucks they are using to pull the tow plow. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audio portion? You may unmute your phones and ask them at this time. Greg said thank you. I saw, that, I saw that little pop up. Do we have any questions from anybody in the room? I, I know you said the report will probably be out in another three weeks to a month. Could we get a copy of the presentation? That the presentation is what will be out in two oh. to three weeks. The report, we are actually getting it today, so it should be posted within the next week. And it's posted on the ODOT research. research website. So you can contact us if there aren't any more questions. Um, I want to remind you, as it said in the final slide, that the final report will be on our website. And if you have any additional questions, we can send them to the researchers at research at dot.state.oh.us. We will forward those to the researchers so that you can get answers. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and it is final. It's all done. It's all done. Thank you. Thank Eric. you for your time. Do you want me to stop sharing? This is how you stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop sharing. Okay, hit that. Right? Oh. oh, it has to be you hit the red one. Oh, I hit the, this red one? Yeah.